Hey everybody, Ross W. Oker, Go Hills TV, powered by JBS, bringing more to the table. Time for our post game with Coach Matt Torres. The, War- uh, the Warriors come out fourteen to nothing, and uh, then thirteen to one over the uh, Spartans. And uh, Coach, early on in, in that first game, uh, you know Southwestern really, you know, they were kind of their own demise. You guys took advantage of a number of walks and some errors, but. Uh, even still when that happens as a coach, you want to go ahead and, and put things away, and your, your guys did that. You, you certainly made them pay for their mistakes. Yeah, it was, re- it was really nice to, to see our guys go out and execute, even if we just got ground ball in the middle of the field, right, to score some runs. and we, Because when you get against quality teams, sometimes that's good enough. And, uh, we, you know, we, ce- we, we celebrated those things. Guys are starting to understand what's important, and, and then we just kept doing it. And then we were able to show a little bit more of, uh, you know, our, our offense to today, and guys executed a little bit better. And, I, and I, I mean, I know that we hadn't been executing great, but our guys were playing hard still, and they were trying to get, uh, you know, trying to get good results. And I think today was just a, a culmination of frustration and maybe them not playing as well as they can or whatever it may be. But – our guy, I, I mean, our guys had been at least trying to get out there and um, play hard and stay in games, even though we haven't been playing our best. Jurgen Fitzer gave you two really good innings, but then uh, he's got a little, a little nagging thing that he dealt with. So that was not planned. Uh, your plan would have been to have gone further with him in game one. Yeah, I was, I was planning to get uh, at least four innings out of him, but he's last couple times out um, when it gets cold and he's pitched in cold all every time. So he's got like his uh, hand cramps right there in the in the thumb area. So. He's been able to get through it, and I just, you know, I just well, was not a reason to keep going today. And just, we had we had enough bullpen, and guys needed some innings too, so it, it worked out fine. Thomas Emrich, uh, we're hoping to get good news about him, but uh, Descartes stepped in and had a, a really good day for. He's really solid defensively. Yeah, he's a really good defensive player, um, and then <clears throat> just really offensively, I think he just needs to get some confidence and some abs and and get going in the right direction. So there's another guy out there that can really still play defense. He just happens to pitch on the other side right now. So I actually talked to him a little bit about it today. That we, you know. Um, he might have to, depend on the news we get with Thomas, he might have to come back to the dark side, I guess. And that would be Turo Rodriguez, yeah. who defensively, I mean, from what I've seen the last uh, couple of years, is really as good as anybody you can put out there purely defensively, right? Yeah, he's he's, he's special. Uh, the glove is special. And, uh, you know, we, we knew going into there, we always had it in our back pocket. But uh, I, d- I also didn't want to ruin the kid's future. You know, his future really is on the mound. And it's going to be really special up there one day. And, <clears throat> and so, you know, it's there. And I told him, you know, he probably needs to start getting some ground balls at least and maybe taking a few swings. But um, things, will, things will work itself out. We can take him out of the starting role, then use him like later, in the, later in the game like we did just there. So it'll work itself out here. Merrick Matthews had a real nice uh, day. Good to see him uh, get going. There's a guy that I know you have a tremendous amount of confidence in, uh, and he had a solid day at the plate uh, in his game today. Yeah, he's had a you know he's had some cupping or some tightness in his back. He's been getting some cupping and uh, trying to loosen that up. So uh, we we gave him a few days off, and I think he's feeling a little bit better. And we got him in there, and it, it was nice to see some guys like just get back in there and get some barrels. Really that. Um, we hadn't been seeing barrels at all, and, um, you know, we, we, we found a few today. Uh, Greg Campos gave you a real good performance on the mound in game two. That's a little bit more like Greg, what we'd expect or had, had expected from him, and it was nice for him to turn around because the last time out against those, these guys, he wasn't very good, and we had to go get him early. So um, it, was a, it was a good performance and uh, saved us some, some uh, uh, bullets in the back end. And uh, Villarreal, uh, both defensively and offensively, maybe uh, maybe the player of the day all total. He had a really really good day. Yeah, he's uh, starting to turn himself into a really good defensive player over there. So it's an, it's nice to th- see, and guys are starting to call on him and kind of see like today I got a call. Can he play second base? I'm like I don't, I don't know. I've never seen him over there. Like you know he's been go- he's been going out there hurt too. He's got some brucitis in his knee and. Um, so he's, he's just a guy that, uh, he was a really good team guy and just wanted to get in the lineup somehow. And, um, he's made himself into a good defensive player. Diego Aragon, uh, comes up with big hits for you. He catches, uh, you know, most of the games for this staff, uh, comment on your assessment of where he's at and in, from maybe from a leadership role that we don't see, obviously, if you're going to make a good tournament run, when that time comes, uh, you're going to have to have some leadership and you got some guys uh, with some experience, but, uh, it's nice when that can come from the catcher role. Can he be that guy that can lead the staff and, and be a leader on the team? 
I think I think he can be. He's starting to uh, really give us something offensively. Um, you know, I don't know that he's still the whole um, follow me, Dave Jansen type thing quite yet. But uh, you know, he really he really goes out and has really changed his body and worked on things. And if you ask me, he's probably been our best hitter in the last like three weeks total. You know, he keeps finding ways to get hits in big situations. So I'm really happy with what he's been doing lately. And a big Texan, uh, good to see him get into one because there's another guy that if we're going to make a run, he's going to have to drive some balls out of the park or at least drive them into gaps. And uh, good to see him go the opposite way. Uh, that's pretty good power to take one out of here the opposite way. Yeah, he need, we, we need to get our middle of order. Actually, our middle of order did not really do anything for us this weekend against Kirkwood. So it was I was a little, uh, I don't want to say disappointed, but just, you know, it's not normal for us to get nothing out of them guys. So, um, you know, those guys starting to hit a little bit. We flipped the we flipped the lineup just a little bit this uh, today, and uh, I'm not sure I liked uh, Villarreal and Ebest keep running right there back to back. So I split them up a little bit, and uh, I kind of li- I kind of like the way that was today. All right, Coach. Uh, uh, two wins today. Get back on the winning track Thursday. The Reavers, uh, as I like to say, the Reavers come to town. Uh, these are not must wins. It's it's about the postseason, but from a confidence standpoint, you certainly, uh, you know, you want to make sure that the guys know that that's the level of baseball we we're going to need to play. Uh, I'm guessing neither team shows their best arms in that midweek. But uh, from your standpoint, what do you need to see Thursday, and what do you hope for on Thursday when Iowa Western comes to town? I just, you know, no matter what, we go out there and execute. Um, you know, win or lose, if we're in the baseball game, we execute. We give ourselves a chance to, to win a baseball game. That's really what I'm looking for is can can we go in there and compete and, you know, make sure our guys understand that uh, we're, we're right there. I, I think we're right there talent-wise. Obviously, I think their, their staff's a little bit deeper than ours, but um, – you can't pitch 20 guys at once. So, right. you know, you only throw one guy at, one, at a time. So it just really re, uh, depends on who's up there. And if we can go out there and get a quality start on Thursday, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do quite yet with that. But we'll go out there and get a quality start. And, you know, then we execute behind them. That was one of the things we didn't do so well over there at their place. And uh, and then, you know, they have a really good pitching staff. So we got to execute team offense a little bit better against them. All right. Uh, that'll be on Thursday, first pitch is at, at one, right one o'clock, now. and let's hope for the nice weather that they're telling us uh, we should get. Uh, thanks to Coach Torres for stopping by here in the U.S. Make Broadcast booth. That's going to do it for our coverage today. Warriors take two from the Spartans, winning fourteen to nothing and thirteen to one. Uh, game one, we gave the win to, to Jurgen Spitzer. Uh, game two, uh, the win goes to Campos, and we'll see, uh, obviously, uh, on that Spitzer thing uh, wh- where that win finally lands, but I'm sure you guys will evaluate that. Either way, the team gets a couple of wins today. That's going to do it for us here on Go Hills TV, powered by JBS, bringing more to the table.